Welcome to Aging on the Sun Coast. I'm your host, Jason Martino. So each and every year, hurricane season starts on June 1st and lasts through November 30th. While we prepare for all potential hazards, it's extremely important that we spend time preparing for both our county's biggest threat, a hurricane. Back in 2017, both Pinellas and Pasco dodged the massive bullet called Hurricane Irma. A shift to our east allowed our area to only experience tropical force winds and rain. Then in 2018, Florida was struck by the incredible force of Hurricane Michael. This hurricane ravaged the panhandle with long-term recovery efforts still occurring today. Because of our local luck, we can never let complacency get in the way of planning. This is especially true for the senior population that resides in either Pasco or Pinellas counties. While many in our everyday community are vulnerable, today's focus is hurricane planning for independent and homebound seniors. To assist our senior population to understand planning and reduce vulnerability, we've invited Mecca Serpestini, the Health and Human Services Program Lead with Pinellas County Emergency Management, and Laura Wilcoxon, the Interim Director with the Pasco County Department of Emergency Management. Today, our guests will help shed light on important senior preparedness information. Mecca, Laura, welcome to Aging on the Sun Coast. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, and Laura, you're no stranger to this show. You've been on for a couple of years shedding some good information on, on how we can prepare during hurricane season. Uh, we greatly appreciate the opportunity. I love talking to our seniors. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, uh, one of the, the things that we talk about each and every year is, is how do we reduce complacency? We've been really, really, really fortunate to not have a direct hit since back in the 1920s. Um, you know, the Tampa Bay Times, they talk about, you know, the myth and, and the lore behind the Indian burial grounds and all sorts of things. But frankly, I just think that we've gotten pretty lucky. But really, it only takes one to, uh, um, that is going to impact us. Um, and that's why we prepare. So today's show, we're going to really going to cover a whole lot of different um, preparedness ideas that we can share with our seniors um, in the hopes that they take this as seriously as they possibly can and go out and do it. So Number one, um, Mecca, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you on here. Where do seniors even start the planning process? Well, Jason, the first step to preparation is understanding your home's risk. For example, learning what evacuation you reside in and understanding that structures such as mobile homes will evacuate every time, regardless of where you're located within the county. You also want to make a plan for where you will evacuate to and making a list of what supplies to take with you. It is important that you share that plan with your family and friends so they know that you're safe and where you are during that disaster. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, communication is, is extremely essential uh, to uh, friends and, and family. Laura, anything, uh, anything different, um, anything to add from the Pasco County perspective? Uh, from Pasco, we're very similar to Pinellas in that we encourage everyone to know their hazards, make a plan, build a kit and make sure that you share the information of your plan with your family and friends. Yeah. And, and Laura, I'm going to stay with you on this one. Um, uh, Mecca talked about uh, hazards as well. One of the hazards is really understanding your evacuation zone. Where does one find out where their evacuation zone is? In Pasco County, we have several sources that residents can find their evacuation zone. One being our disaster guide. Every year we publish a new disaster guide. If we have any updates, the Evacuation zones will be updated in that guide. So you can pick up a disaster guide from our local libraries, any of our building, uh, county buildings, as well as our post offices. We also have the disaster guide and evacuation zones published on our website. And you can also find them on our social media app, the My Pasco app. It sounds like you're really saturating the community with these guides. That's, that's how important it is that you want to put one in, in everybody's hand. Um, and you have uh, paper copies and you also have the online version. So um, anyone with uh, um, expertise online can easily access that as well as paper. Mecca, how about Pinellas County? Um, um, I know that you all publish guides. Uh, um, um, where, where can they be found? Uh, very similar to Pasco County at the government buildings or our libraries. Um, we also have it on our website as, uh, as well as within our app, uh, Ready Pinellas. Um, you can also find your uh, evacuation zone by going on our website, uh, Know Your Zone, or calling our office at 727-464-5550, and anyone within the office can assist you with identifying it. Yeah, and, and, and both Laura and, um, and Mecca have uh, mentioned the uh, apps. We're, we're going to talk about that in, in a little bit of detail on, on the second half of the show because uh, uh, 21st century technology is really helping people nowadays, so we want to make sure that we... Uh, um, that we showcase that as well. 
Mecca, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in, um, um, stay with you on this one. Um, um, I know that with my experience working with you, that you work with um, facilities around Pine Ellis County, and um, but we also have a lot of people living um, within the community in their own homes, uh, whether that be uh, an apartment or whether that be um, a, a structured house. But we certainly have a lot of seniors that live in assisted living facilities or skilled nursing facilities. Is it important for those residents of those types of facilities to understand um, that resident's plans? Yes, absolutely. Assisted living and skilled nursing facilities are required by law to have an emergency plan that includes where the residents will go and how they're gonna get there if the building has to be evacuated. It's very important for residents to not only understand this plan so that they have uh, realistic expectations, but to share this plan with their family and friends so that they know where to locate them if communications uh, go down during the event. Yeah, again, we're beating that drum again, communicate that. Um, and, um, and this is for family members as well, um, that if your, uh, uh, your loved one is in a skilled nursing facility and uh, they potentially don't have the capacity to understand what the planning process is, it's also a great question for you to ask the administrator of those facilities. Anything different in, um, in Pasco, Laura? The only thing we have different is we require our assisted living facilities and other facilities to have a plan on where they would evacuate outside our region if we were looking at a large scale hurricane. So that's a good question that you should ask the facility that if you're leaving the regional area, where is that alternate location that they will be going? Really important. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Laura, I'm going to stay with you on this one here is, uh, you know, we have uh, we have choices that we can make when we're uh, posed with the threat of a hurricane. We can either make a decision to stay home and hunker down, as they say, um, or we can uh, evacuate either to a facility or a safe spot in the county. Um, supposing that we had something barreling our way through the Gulf and you know there was a couple days before it got here and I decided to uh, uh, stay at home and hunker down, what are the types of things that I need to be thinking about if I'm going to make that decision to stay home? It's the old song, you know, should I stay or should I go? If you are staying at your home, it's because you know your hazards and that you are safe from a rising water, storm surge, flooding hazards. So you're not going to have the water inundation come into your home and you're safe from the wind. If you are not safe from either of those hazards, you would be looking at evacuating. So staying home, make sure that you are preparing by having your plan of supplies, uh, making sure that you have enough food and water for at least seven days. When it comes to water, we recommend one gallon per person per day. Make sure that you're also including your infants, pets, seniors, all with that. And that if you have non-perishable foods and cans, make sure you have a mechanical can opener that you can open it manually. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you said old song because that was around 1981, Laura. <laughs> so uh, is it also fair to say that if, uh, if a resident has the means to fortify their home, that that puts himself in, in also another uh, place, a mitigation activity, if you will? Absolutely. So if you can take a few extra measures, harden your windows. If you have hurricane straps that you can put on your roof, your home will st be a lot more stable during a hurricane event. You're right. Brace that garage door, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Mecca, anything to add on um, folks uh, deciding to stay home and for uh, Pinellas County? No, I think Laura covered that very well. Yeah. All right. So Mecca, now we have uh, the same storm is coming here. And uh, I thought that I would uh, be in a good spot by staying home. And uh, all of a sudden I decided, you know what? This uh, storm has intensified and uh, I need to th start thinking about going somewhere else. What types of things do I need to be thinking about if I'm choosing to leave my home? Well, there are several options when making a plan for evacuation. Our first recommendation is to stay with family or friends that reside in a non-evacuation zone, as this is usually the most comfortable situation when needing to leave your home due to a storm. But there are options such as hotels, and we will always open public shelters when there's an, or an evacuation ordered. Um, planning for your transportation is also very important. Both of our counties do make the public transportation system free during an evacuation to ensure that all of our residents have the means to evacuate. Yep, yep. Everybody's planning and, uh, and so should our residents. Laura, anything to add on the PASCO perspective? No, same thing for PASCO. Uh, it is much more comfortable for you to stay with friends, family, 
Uh, my parents, they're in their 70s. They get together with all of their friends and their evacuation plan is to go to a hotel together. So they have each other for the support system and everyone kind of divides up uh, their to-go kit that one person is in charge of food, another person's in charge of lighting, another person's in charge of the next thing. And they get together and really do it as a community of friends. Yep, and uh, um, good planning, bravo on their on their part. Um, good example. Um, you know, Mecca, Mecca touched a little bit on um, sheltering and how the counties offer different types of sheltering on there as well. One of the uh, big buzzwords we hear in the, in the senior community, and not for all seniors, obviously, but um, for certain seniors, is uh, what they call a special needs shelter. Um, Laura, what is, what is a special needs shelter? A special needs shelter is for residents who require either electricity, they're electrically dependent, or have, are on oxygen and oxygen dependent. Every year we require residents who fall into the criteria to register with our uh, department through emergency management, but a registration is not a reservation. It does not reserve you a spot at a shelter. It is simply a planning tool to help us as a county ensure that we have the supplies, materials, shelter space to be available to residents in need. You would also need to bring a caregiver with you as there's very limited medical staff, as well as you need to bring medication and anything that you need, special dietary and stuff like that. Yeah, so if you're, um, if you're planning to stay home and you're building your kit to stay there, I mean, uh, most of the things that you build for that kit should be taken, should be able to be transferable and, and taken with you. And a good point about the care, uh, caregiver situation that, you know, Many of our seniors are caring uh, for someone with uh, Alzheimer's disease or related dementia, and uh, due to the uh, uh, the staffing requirements at shelters, it's uh, it just helps the whole big picture by by staying with the person you love. And I really do think that people want to do that anyway. But that is uh, that is certainly a requirement. Mecca, anything to add on the uh, Pine Isles County side? Um, our program is very much like Pasco's. Um, I do just encourage everyone that if there is any kind of medical equipment or anything that you need to use on a weekly basis that you bring that with you, because we do have, uh, we have some supplies, but supplies are limited at those locations. Yeah. Um, and, and Mecca, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, as well. We had, uh, um, again, we have uh, folks that either live in uh, facilities, either an assisted living facility or a skilled nursing facility. Uh, we have folks that uh, live in homes, they live in high rises, they live in mobile home parks, um, they live in apartment complexes, all of which um, um, they need to plan for. A lot of the folks, a lot of our seniors that live within the community um, may receive some sort of service um, in place. And um, specifically, um, many of our seniors receive uh, home health services. So maybe there was a, uh, uh, an incident where they had to do some rehabilitation at the skilled nursing facility, and then they get uh, um, discharged and, and now they're back home, but they just need a little extra help there. Is it important for that person um, that is receiving home health to understand what their um, provider's plans are for taking care of them um, during that time and, and afterwards? Oh, absolutely. It's very important to ask good questions of the providers to understand how the continu continuity of care will take place it's fully acceptable to request a copy of their plan to compare it with your personal plan to ensure that you and your provider are on the same page. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, and especially if uh, um, having a, a copy of the plan to really go back and forth, that's where you're really gonna see if there's any kind of gaps um, between what they have planned for you and, and not. And home health is just extremely important to, to provide that continuity of care um, for that senior. Laura, any, anything different in, in PASCO from your perspective? Same thing here in Pasco. We encourage starting to have those conversations as early as you can. Making a plan now will save you a lot of headache and a lot of problems down the road, especially when it's under emergency conditions. Yeah. Um, Mecca and, uh, and Laura, uh, um, we're starting to run out of time for our, our first half of the show. I'm really happy that you're here with me today. We're going to talk with you on the second half and, uh, and right after this break. So Please stay with us while we take a short break. As usual, don't forget to have a pen or pencil ready. During the break and at the end of our show, we'll be highlighting important information covering both Pasco and Pinellas County's disaster preparation and resources. When we come back, we'll explore more senior preparedness ideas.
Many of us don't want to believe that elder abuse, neglect, or exploitation can happen to a family member, a friend, or even ourselves. Elder abuse is a growing problem and is severely underreported. Many victims are reluctant to report due to fear, embarrassment, shame, or guilt. In order to prevent elder abuse, we must take action. Don't be afraid to talk about the issue and report it to the Florida Abuse Hotline at 1-800-962-2873. Together, we can make a difference. Welcome back to Aging on the Sun Coast. During the first half of the show, Mecca Serfestini and Laura Wilcoxon helped us understand senior disaster preparation and sheltering options. So let's continue this conversation and talk about other ways that we can prepare. Mecca, Laura, welcome back to the second half of the show. Uh, you guys uh, um, provided a, a, an incredible amount, of, incredible amount of good content during the first half, and we're going to continue that. Laura, medications. You know as well as I know, and I know that Mecca knows that medications are a massive part of our seniors' lives. Um, and with medications, that's something that we have to take into consideration when we're making our preparation, uh, especially for maintenance stuff and all that. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit on, on how seniors can prepare um, for the medications that they currently take? Sure. As part of your planning process, you should be writing down a list of your medication, including their names, how frequently you take them, and their dosage. With that list, you should talk over with your pharmacy and your doctor about what their emergency plans are on how you can get emergency refills should a disaster be uh, coming towards us. You also want to take into consideration any medication that needs to be refrigerated. Have that as part of your plan on how you anticipate on keeping those medications cold, either with a cooler and freezer packs or finding yourself to where you can evacuate and have electricity to keep a cooler and a refrigeration system going. Yep, that, that's a great point. You know, some, some medications we take, they're just sitting on our counter. It might be a pill. You don't have to worry about refrigeration, but um, for a lot of our folks out there, they have, to, um, they have to worry about keeping it at a certain temperature on there. Um, I'd like to add also, uh, Laura, that, you know, I, I do believe that uh, many of our seniors that, you know, they go to the same pharmacy over and over to get their meds, and they've built that rapport with that, um, with that pharmacist. Um, just having that conversation with that pharmacist about preparation is also um, something I think that we promote. And uh, you had mentioned that, you know, they should write down all their lists. And, and we know that many people have, uh, you know, more than five medications they'll say that they take. Uh, the pharmacies are at a, a great position to even print out the list that they currently have for them. So that's another option. Uh, Mecca, anything to add on the, uh, the medication side from uh, Pinellas? Certainly you agree that it's pretty important to prepare for that. Oh, absolutely. Um, we really push the same message that Laura had there, having those conversations with your pharmacy and planning ahead of time to make sure that you know exactly what to do and not wait for the emergency to act. Yeah. So um, um, different than medications, but a lot of our seniors have them, is pets. And pets are like children. And we've seen many cases in past uh, storms where um, if there wasn't a provision for um, uh, Fifi or Fufu, the, the dog to uh, have care for, that that person was going to stay home, which tells us that that should be a part of our preparation as well. Mecca, how do, how do seniors understand how to also, not in addition to uh, preparing for themselves, how to prepare for, their, for the pets that they have? Well, we, we do not require pre-registration for our pet-friendly shelters, um, but it's important to prepare for your pet the same way you prepare for yourself by evaluating um, what they're going to need during their stay away from home and preparing a kit for them. Um, some items to include would be a crate, a leash and collar, any medications they're on and lists of those medications. Uh, food, and we always recommend a comfort item to help keep them calm, a favorite toy, a favorite blanket, uh, one of your uh, clothing items. Um, pets do not sleep in the same area as the people in our pet friendly shelters, so having that comfort item is very important in keeping them calm during this high stress environment. Um, animal services is on site with your animal 24 hours a day to ensure that all common areas stay clean and that no one walks away with a pet that does not belong to them. But ultimately, it is the resident's responsibility to feed, walk, and maintain the health and cleanliness of their pet while they're in the shelter. And we always make sure to, to note that if your pet is already prone to severe anxiety, we suggest trying to make arrangements with family or friends as this stressful situation may not be the most appropriate for them. 
Yeah, such a such a great point. We were talking during the break about our own pets and, and how they react to uh, different situations such as thunder and lightning. And so if you take a, a pet out of a, a comfort zone that they are normally accustomed to, um, sometimes that, uh, that exaggerates the anxiety that they may have. And then going back to what Laura was talking about, um, that, you know, sheltering options are always there for public sheltering, but it's always best to have um, somebody uh, residing in a, in a high level area um, that's a friend or family, um, and maybe that's a good spot for, for a dog or a cat or, or your pet. Anything to add on um, pet preparation, um, Laura, in Pasco County? Pasco County is very similar to Pinellas. Uh, the only thing I'd add is make sure you keep your vet records and have photos of you and your pet as part of your planning package. Yeah, um, good points, um, um, Laura. Those um, vet records are, are very important and keep them up to date. Um, let's go back to guides. We, you know, we touched uh, a little bit on the guides a little bit earlier. We talked about the plethora of um, um, places that people can find them. Um, but what's in the guide and, and why would people want to pick up this guide and, and keep it with them? Um, Laura, do you want to you want to touch on that? Yeah, uh, the Pasco County guide goes through all the different types of hazards that residents and tourists could face within Pasco County proper. So we don't just talk about the hurricanes. We also go into the flooding, wildfires, and other types of hazards that you could face here. It goes through what to do before, during, and after a storm, provides resources, as well as a different, uh, also the contact information on who you could reach out to for more help and additional planning information. Yeah, um, and um, you make a uh, uh, another incredible point that um, we've, we've come a long way in emergency management and in preparedness that you know, it used to be that you know, we could calculate what our biggest threat would be. It would be a hurricane over here, but we really weren't doing ourselves a, a very good service um, by um, not taking into consideration all the other different types of hazards out there. And there's a multitude of them. Tornadoes, there's flooding out there, um, biological um, stuff. And then um, we, what we've experienced for the last 16 months is a pandemic and how to prepare for some of those things, unfortunately. So um, I love your point about all hazards and, um, and, and we should be thinking about almost everything that we possibly can. Mecca, anything to add about the, uh, the Pinellas County Guide? Um, and, I, and I know that it's, it's in a million places as well and, and people just need to take a look for it and, and pick it up. It is, and we are very proud um, this year we're able to offer the full guide in Spanish and Vietnamese. Um, that's new to this year. Uh, because those are our county's primary languages be beyond English. But the contents are very much the same as the Pasco County's All Hazards Guide. Yeah. Um, Mecca, I want to I wanna talk about initiatives. Um, just like uh, any organization, um, Pinellas County Emergency Management, Pasco Emergency Management, um, they learn an incredible uh, amount from um, um, things that they've had to deal with in, in the past, and they apply those best practices um, for the future. Um, so initiatives, What's, what kind of initiatives are occurring in Pinellas County that would, um, um, that would help out the uh, senior population here? We have several initiatives here. Um, I'll start with the uh, Sheriff's Office Barrier Island Reentry Program. So after an evacuation, the Barrier Islands are closed to all except residents and businesses um, to protect that property down there. Um, each authorized household or business must have a reentry pass to get back on the island. And you can get that reentry pass from your local city hall or from the county sheriff's office. Now, in addition, we have um, some new technology that we use in Pinellas County. Um, one is a storm surge web-based application where you can actually type in your address and get a visualization of how the water is going to um, affect your personal property during a, a surge event. Um, we also have a mass communication system where we communicate with our residents directly uh, called Alert Pinellas. Um, it's free for all of our residents um, and allows them to receive up-to-date disaster information directly from our emergency management office uh, during an event. And you can sign up your phone, your email, um, and even your fax number through that notification system. Uh, I'm signed up for it. I get the alerts when uh, when I need to, and, and I appreciate that technology being there. Um, Laura, you're no uh, stranger to initiatives and technology. What's happening in Pasco? Pasco County also uses the alert system, but we call ours Alert Pasco. So you can sign up for that either through the My Pasco app 
or you can go online to our emergency management webpage. While you're also on the emergency management webpage, we have also created video vignettes or preparedness videos that you can view to help you better prepare for if you have to go to a shelter, how to prepare your pets, how to build a kit, and a variety of other topics in preparedness. I've seen those videos. Um, well done. Um, they are um, very intuitive, very easy to understand, and, um, and very animated. Laura, you, uh, you uh, hinted and, and you touched base on the MyPasco app. What's, what is that? My Pasco app is a smartphone application that you can download. It will get you information the fastest, quickest way. So as soon as we're publishing something out to the public, it will go ahead and give you an alert on your phone and you can see the latest and greatest things that are happening. You can also register for the alert Pasco on that site. You could find your zone. There's a lot of information that you can use using that, uh, find using the My Pasco app. Pretty, um, pretty darn cool. 21st century coming into play everywhere. Mecca, you're no stranger to 21st century uh, technology as well. Um, do you have any types of apps that are similar to uh, Pasco counties? Yes, we have a similar app called Ready Pinellas. It's a great tool for making your emergency plan. It's available for free download at both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Uh, you can sign up for Alert Pinellas, check your evacuation zone, find readiness checklists for you and your pet, and get additional information on both special needs shelters and pet-friendly shelters. Um, and also access a digital copy of the All Hazards Guide that we discussed earlier. Oh, pretty cool. So you can even get it right there. So you, if you download the app, you can get the guide um, 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 right there as well, and you can kind of thumb through it and, and uh, find out what you need. Um, Laura and uh, Mecca, I, uh, I really appreciate you uh, coming on Aging on the Sun Coast. Uh, each and every year, you guys do an incredible job helping our citizens prepare. Um, certainly, our focus today is seniors, and, and I feel that um, by today's show that we're, um, we put them in a better spot. Thank you again for coming on our show. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Jason. No problem. We hope you learned a great deal from uh, this month's broadcast. We also hope this episode helped you take this hurricane season as serious as you should. At the end of the show, we'll repost some valuable resources available to you. So get your pencil ready. We'll see you next month. And until then, please stay safe and utilize all the resources these two emergency management offices have offered you. Many of us don't want to believe that elder abuse, neglect, or exploitation can happen to a family member, a friend, or even ourselves. Elder abuse is a growing problem and is severely underreported. Many victims are reluctant to report due to fear, embarrassment, shame, or guilt. In order to prevent elder abuse, we must take action. Don't be afraid to talk about the issue and report it to the Florida Abuse Hotline at 1-800-962-2873. Together, we can make a difference.